The land of words with flera. There's a tasty one, chingadera. Its spice is bold beyond compara, but use it wisely with great care. It dances on the tongue, debonera, but might cause a stir, so beware. Chingadera is fun, a word so rara. Just be mindful. When you share us. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Coffee and Headlines. You know, watching Dora this morning explain chingadera makes me think about the fact that I should have asked or, uh, Dora to prepare a little spiel on another phrase for this morning, de la chingada. De la chingada is what we say when something is really intense. And I tell you, this morning is the reason why Many of you wimp out and head up north during the summer months. It is hot. It is humid. The air feels like a wet sponge. And the best or worst part of it all is that the air is not moving a centimeter. So <laughs> it is, it hace un calor de la chingada. It's, 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 it's a de la chingada type of heat that is plaguing Puerto Vallarta today, but you know, we know it. We know what happens every summer. We might as well get used to it. I just hope that wherever you are, you are either submerged in a refreshing swimming pool, surrounded by air conditioning, or have multiple fans bombarding you as I do, or maybe you are in a place that is a little cooler. But wherever you are, you are also here, and that is absolutely wonderful here being coffee and headlines where we connect every morning with news and headlines and questions and ideas and today we have four bits of news and they are short but they are chatty and they are wonderful I, at least i think they're wonderful so we're going to go into those just now and then we will continue with the rest of the broadcast for starters let me get rid of the black screen. We've been busy thinking much about uh, or focusing our attention on the Guadalajara to Puerto Vallarta highway. But while we've been doing this, there is another highway that has been in the works, the one from Compostela to Tepic. Now, you know, just for reference, if you've ever gone to Guadalajara on the highway, Compostela is the town that is right after the nasty curves, which thankfully we don't have to deal with anymore if we take the new highway. And from Compostela, it's easy to get to Tepic. But what we haven't been talking about is the fact that there's a new highway between Compostela and Tepic in the works. And Governor Miguel Angel Navarro Quintero, the governor of, of Nayarit, has announced that that stretch from Compostela to Tepic will be ready 
um, mid-September. So that new stretch combined with the new um, stretch that goes from Compostela to Puerto Vallarta, including the final uh, section that goes from Bucerías to the airport, will reduce travel time between Puerto Vallarta and Tepic to only 90 minutes, an hour and a half. That is nothing. That's like a commute back and forth to work and uh, from work to home or vice versa in Mexico City. 90 minutes. Now, you may be asking yourselves, uh, what is in Tepic and why should we want to go? Well, honestly, I have no idea. I mean, I have good friends in Tepic, but what I can tell you is Tepic is the capital of another state. So we will be increasingly curious as to why we can and should go to Tepic. We, of course, know that from Tepic, you can head to other beaches and other points of interest and a beautiful lagoon that is not far from Tepic. And, you know, who knows what else we find. But this is good news to learn that another highway is also close to completion. Um, can you hear my neighbor's dogs? They're really adorable. But they're distracting me ever so slightly. Let me move on to the next bit of news that I have. And this has to do with also travel. President-elect Claudia Scheinbaum. Scheinbaum. <laughs> I'm so used to the other pronunciation. Claudia Scheinbaum is keen on the resurgence of train travel in Mexico. She has confirmed that she will focus her attention on the continuity of both the Maya train project and also the interoceanic train project that hopes to connect the Gulf of Mexico with the Pacific Ocean. And as far as other train related projects mentioned during her campaign, she has stated that they will be presented sometime this coming week. But the overall goal, and I quote, is to build 3,000 kilometers of passenger train tracks during the next six years. And this, of course, whoa, I didn't mean to go to that screen. This, of course, is excellent news for those of us that are keen on getting to know different parts of Mexico. But of course, we cannot go anywhere unless we have decent weather. Let's take a look at what's going on out there. In next week's music appreciation presentation, titled Mambo Madness, we take a look at mambo, a genre of Cuban music pioneered in the late 1930s and later popularized in the big band style by Perez Prado. You will discover how the music became a dance craze in Mexico and the United States until it was dethroned by cha-cha-cha. As usual, we will rely on video and audio selections to tell the story of this music, which has had a major impact around the world. The meeting is on Thursday, July 11 at the Joint Boutique Hotel and Co-Work on Insurgentes Street at 5 p.m. The music will be hot and tickets are already available for purchase at the front desk, but rest assured, we will enjoy the experience in air-conditioned comfort. Hope to see you there, and thank you for spreading the word. And of course, research, well, I'll tell you about research for, for Mambo in a second. First, let me focus on the weather. Uh, it's 28 degrees. Oh my God, humidity is at 87%. No wonder I feel completely schwitzy this morning 28 degrees 87 percent humidity and our forecast for today says light rain throughout the day a chance of rain of 46 percent a high of 31 and a low of 26 tomorrow wednesday light rain throughout the day a chance of rain of 49 percent a high of 30 and a low of 26 and then thursday mostly cloudy skies in the morning with thunderstorms in the afternoon a chance of rain of 86%, a high of 29, and a low of 26. So it's going to be a balmy week, and we hope that these chances of rain actually do materialize. Now, what else do we have here? Oh, yes. Let me tell you that uh, one of the most memorable episodes of the spotlight we've had 
of the 16 that we've had was the one in which Carmen Porras from Oculto came and joined us and gave us a little presentation on the cuisine of the Yucatan Peninsula and the ingredients of the Yucatan Peninsula. And it was a fascinating, at least for me, it was a fascinating experience because I learned about ingredients that I didn't know much about. And of course, when Carmen told us about their use, um, we were we were all kind of mesmerized and we all got a little hungry. And there was a reason why she was doing that. Of course, she was getting us excited about her recent Yucatan Cuisine dinner, which was a huge success. And now Carmen and Claudia have to have decided they're going to be keen on continuing all these explorations of regular, uh, not regular, of uh, regional cuisine. And of course, we are going to promote them. The reason I'm telling you this is because this morning, Carmen, as she was heading out of town for um, Family Matters, told me that she has finished the next presentation that she's going to share with us on the spotlight, probably not tomorrow, probably the week after. And this has to do with their next, oops, I'm disturbing. I'm, I am, hold on just a second. Let me get myself out of the way. There you go. She is going to tell us about her next regional Mexican specialty dinner, which will have to do with the cuisine of Puebla. This is going to be on July 27th at 7 p.m. at Oculto, of course. And I can tell you that this is going to be amazing. I've looked at the menu and it's going to be absolutely scrumptious. And she's going to feature one of my favorite Mexican cuisine dishes. Uh, and I'm going to show you what they're called. And then you're going to tell me if you know them. And if you don't know them, well, one of my favorites is Wausontles. Now, if you've never heard of Wausontles, just write, huh, H-U-H in a comment, and I will tell you what they are tomorrow or the day after. Wausontles, they are so wonderful, but you don't see them a lot here in Puerto Vallarta. So, there you go. If you know Wausontles, tell me your experience with them. If you don't know Wausontles, just write H-U-H, huh, <laughs> in your comment, and I'll be happy to elaborate. And of course, tomorrow we have the spotlight. I'm still lining up guests, but if, if the planets align, we'll have at least one very fascinating guest joining us tomorrow. I'm loving all the hus, H-U-H's, huh? <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, we, we're, you're going to love Wild Suntless. They are heavenly. Anyhow, that is story number one that I wanted to share with you. Story number two that I want to share with you has to do with our dear friends from El Rey Lounge de Versalles. As you may recall, um, Lorenzo and Rihanna commissioned uh, a walk around video of their brand new bar and lounge and eatery on uh, Vienna Street here in Colonia Versalles, and it was a pleasure to be there. And little by little, they've been organizing this, that, and the other. And it was maybe a week and a half ago that Lorenzo reached out to me and said, you know what, we are thinking of doing a drag brunch. What do you think of the idea, and can you recommend a drag queen that would be a great host? And I thought to myself, well, I don't think there has ever been a drag brunch north of the Rio Cuale. If I am incorrect in that statement, please let me know because I'm not entirely sure. But for the life of me, I cannot think of any restaurant that uh, has hosted a drag brunch north of the Rio Cuale. Uh, so I think it's about time to see, you know, what 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 that looks like. And when it came to re uh, recommending a drag queen, well, I thought that recently, also in the spotlight, we hung out with Memo Lira and Karma the Bitch. Uh, of course, Memo Lira, we know from Vallarta 101 because he does these amazing walking tours. And one of his walking tours 
was the silent disco walk, which will hopefully come back during the cooler months in the fall and winter. And this was hosted by Karma the Bitch, who would dress up, obviously, and just walk around around um, the quale and whatnot with people following around, dancing, listening to disco music on headphones. So I said to Karma, I've just recommended you. Do you want the connection? Karma said, yes. Long story short, today, just this morning, I got an awesome message from Lorenzo. And he says, Karma is amazing. And he sent me these uh, promotionals, which clearly indicate that they are going ahead with this drag brunch idea. The first one is going to happen on July 27th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And the chef, there's going to be a special chef, special guest chef, and it's going to be Memo Wolf. And of course, we know Memo from his amazing restaurant also here in Versailles, Barrio Bistrio. So this is this sounds like it's going to be an amazing thing. We don't know if they're going to have a guest chef every time. We don't know if the tick, if the idea will fly or not, but we're certainly going to promote because the space is awesome, the idea is awesome, and it just feels good to connect people with each other. And guess what? One of these two photographs actually moves. Let's take a look. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Karma the Bitch, your singing drag queen diva of Puerto Vallarta. And I want to invite you this Saturday, July 27th, from 11 to 2 p.m. to the fabulous drag brunch here at El Rey Lounge. He is out of town and I am taking over. So come on and get your tickets because first come, first serve in the AC. Come on and have a good time with us. We'll be waiting for you. Get your reservations right here, right now. See you then. How about that? And it's all connections that were made here at Copy and Headlines, and that makes me feel special, and it makes me feel good. Now, back to the mambo, just very briefly. This is going to be so much fun, and of course, it's become a rabbit hole, or many rabbit holes, because mambo is just one of at least 10 amazing Latin rhythms that have been, um, that have prevailed in Latin America and then throughout the world in the last century. So we're going to start by looking at 10 um, basic Latin rhythms that have existed between the end of the 19th century and the present. And of course, for me to do a little bit of mini research on each one of those has been like a huge, huge rabbit hole. Like I'm stuck in salsa right now. I wish I was talking about salsa instead of mambo, but that's not true. Mambo is going to be amazing. I hope you can join us this coming Thursday in air-conditioned comfort. And then, of course, my birthday came and went, but I am soon after that starting to promote my birthday celebration presentation. This one is called Notes from the Heart. And this is a pay what you want. I want the room to be full. So if you cannot afford it, I want you there anyway. What this is going to be about is, well, as I've mentioned before, my best birthday present to myself is to share the joy of music with others. So the music that we're going to talk about is a handful of pieces of music from different genres that have touched me so deeply for whatever reason. And it'll be a pleasure to share them with you. And hopefully, hopefully I will find a way to convey the emotional connection that I have with the pieces in such a way that you will also connect with them. What are the pieces going to be? Well, there's going to be a little bit of classical, a little bit of pop, a little bit of jazz, a little bit of country. Um, probably not a little bit of rock and roll, as Donny Osmond would say. But it's going to be a lot of fun. Now, let's head over to our chit chat and see what you guys are thinking about. Oh, 
Okay, okay, lots of good mornings, lots of good... Gary Green, thank you for the happy belated birthday. But, Papi, you're traveling again. You know, I please tell me that you take me with you wherever you go because I just love how much you love exploring Mexico. It just feels so warm in my heart. Thank you very much for your good wishes. But also thank you for being so passionate about exploring our country. That means so much to me. Um, many good mornings, many good afternoons. Thank you so very much for that. Purim pam pum pum. Ooh, I see that we're not the only ones that are having a sunny and hot day. Uh, I can see that Barbara is aiming her energy to one of those as well. Oh my goodness, and Sue says it's 95. Those are Fahrenheit, I believe, with 52% humidity in Leesburg, Virginia. Not much different. I hear you. I hear you. Muffin. Muffin says there is a great chain of sushi restaurants around town called Happy Sumo and quite a very uh, quite a few very handsome men and that's about it. Now now there's also yarn stores. There's a great vegetarian store in downtown Topeka. There is uh, blah, 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 blah. there's a new monument like a new vantage point like a tall tall super tall tower that they were building somewhere in the middle of the city. I don't know if that's completed or not. Um, but it'll be interesting to find excuses to go and explore Tepic because, yes, there are very handsome men in the capital city of the state of Nayarit. Uh, let's see what else we have. Ooh, the Northwest. 100 degree forecast today for Portland, Oregon with 50% humidity. At least the heat wave is supposed to end in a few days. Keep your fingers crossed, Lynn. Um, Angelica asks about the, I don't know if you're asking about the Wasontles or if you're asking about the dinner. Um, again, I know what the menu is, but I don't want to give it away because, you know, that's Carmen's surprise. But what I will do is I will leave Carmen's Facebook page in the show notes because she hasn't created an event for this particular dinner just yet. And then I see your, huh? <laughs> wow, soundless. Oh, Luisa had to be different and say, K. <laughs> oh, I will be so very happy to seduce you with wow, soundless tomorrow. I totally will. Uh, I love, oh my God, you haven't tried wow, soundless. I love it. I love it. Oh, let's see what else. Then Luisa says the brunch is going to be fun. You know, I I have to tell you, I don't know that I'm an expert on drag brunch. For me, brunch is fun brunch. And then there was there was that, um, oh my God, we had this Lower East Side apartment in New York City. And there was this restaurant that had uh, drag brunch. And that was a lot of fun. And I know that it's been done in some of the gay hotels in town. I am sure it's going to be fun. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Stan says, drag brunch, count me in. What a blast. Brian asks, how much are tickets for the drag brunch? I actually don't know, Brian, but um, I will, because again, this is just brand, brand spanking new information for me. But we will leave their, their Facebook page in the show notes and hopefully get some more details in the near future. But it does sound like a lot of fun. And it's nice to support new ideas. Um, Betsy Ann says, have, I have my Mambo ticket and looking forward to it. I always look forward to seeing you, Betsy, because you are just such a wonderful presence in the music appreciation presentations. Uh, let's see. Is the Mambo presentation also going to be available to buy on your webpage? Oh, you bring me to the delicate subject that I haven't been recording these presentations as I said I would. But thank you. Thank you for pushing me or, or nudging me to do that. The technical answer to your question, Luisa, is yes. I just need to create um, the time to record them and upload them. And then Liz, God bless you, Liz. Let me make this happen. Hold on. I am going to write a comment. 
and it's going to appear eventually it takes a few seconds and i'm going to put it on the screen and there it is wow suntle wow suntle it's an herb but what's fascinating about well I, no no i don't want to get ahead of myself i'll talk about wow suntle tomorrow and it's going to be a lot of fun and i think this brings us to the end of today yes how wonderful to connect with you how wonderful to be part of nurturing connections it makes my day like very few people and very few things do i was so grateful to get great news from carmen at oculto this morning and i was so grateful to get great news from our friends at el rey lounge in versalles so thank you so much for spending a few minutes with us and um, hopefully we'll do the same thing tomorrow and hopefully tomorrow afternoon also for the spotlight and then thursday in the morning and thursday in the evening for music presentation it never gets boring at least not for me have a great day and i'll see you soon <laughs>